welcome back. Here's the video on angle of depression. We talked about angle of elevation earlier. This next video, angle of depression. How do they differ? Not a whole lot. Okay. As we know, elevations to go up, so depression must mean to come down. So when we talk about an angle of, depre or ele uh, angle of depression, I can't remember which one we're on, here's what we have to think about. We're going to have a starting point. That's our vertex for the angle. And that angle is going to, once again, be made out of two rays. Okay. Number one, just like last time, has to be a horizontal path. So from this angle, or vertex, to create the angle, we need one horizontal ray. Now, because we're now dealing with depression from our vertex, the second path has to go downward. So that's what an angle of depression is, a horizontal path and then a path downwards. Right. Let's take a look at this special problem. I think you can tell who the author of this problem was. An X-wing fighter is flying at an angle <coughs> altitude of 92 meters. The pilot spots his target at an angle of depression of 47 degrees. How, must, how far must the proton torpedo fly in order to hit the target? Okay, let's try to model this. Okay, the first thing we know is that we got ourselves an X-wing fighter flying at an altitude of 92 meters. So, somewhere up top, if I was an artist, I'd draw it, but we got our X-wing. Okay, we also know somewhere down below is the ground. And this 92 represents the altitude. And altitude, recall, is height. So here's what we got so far. Now we move to sentence two. The pilot spots his target at an angle of depression of 47 degrees. Okay, so we need to draw this in accurately. I'm going to tell you, if this right here is the target, watch carefully what I do. An angle of depression has to have a horizontal line. So if we're up here at our x-wing, one of the sides or of the angle has to be horizontal. The other has to be the path down. So we know that angle created by the horizontal and the path down is 47 degrees. There's always a common mistake. People understand the angle of depression means down and they want to put the 47 here. No bueno. If you think of this angle, that angle does not have a horizontal line that creates it, or a ray. So we have to scratch that. So what we can do is we can kind of transfer this 92 degrees over. And I should say meters, not degrees. And now we have our, our right triangle to help us answer the question, how far must the torpedo fly? So in other words, if that torpedo Pew! We're looking at this. So let's look inside this right triangle here to help us solve. We got our angle. The 92 happens to be the opposite leg. We're at 47. The x happens to be our hypotenuse. Yeah, I better write it here. So when we look at our trig formulas, the opposite in hypotenuse deals with the sine function. So when we go to solve this, and I'm going to scoot this over just a bit, we're going to say the sine of our angle, which is 47, equals the opposite of 92 over that distance x. And that second verse of Grandmaster Trig, when you use the trig to find the sine, set up a proportion, cross multiply, and divide. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that proportion up. Under any number, we can create our own denominator. So it's 1. We are going to cross multiply. We're going to do our x times the sine of 47 and 92 times 1. And then we're going to take our calculator on the last step. To get x by itself, we have to divide 92 by the sine of 47. So 92 divided by the sine of 47, 
and we should get about 125.8 meters. Okay. Just remember, the angle of depression has to be a horizontal line and a path down. May the force be with you.